Is there water back there? Uh, oh, I, I don't bring water. I love that you ask Alex. He's yeah, only been in here one time. Well, I'm like, who's who's I'm, probably not doing something right now? I'm just trying not to touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so many waters there's in there. There's so many waters. Oh, go ahead, lob it. <laughs> oh, do you know what word I always associate with you, by the way? What? Do you remember when we talked about boofing? <laughs> Do you know what that is? Do you remember? Yes, yeah, when you stick stuff in your. What? Zero <laughs> percent. <laughs> what I have in my mind. Do you remember we were talking about when you were in hair school? We were talking about how you like boof your hair. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> With doing podcasts is obviously to just have conversations with people, but sometimes questions that you ask somebody reveals a lot about them. So I'm like, what are some questions that I could ask anyone who comes on here? So I wrote a giant list and I want to go through them with you. And if you want to answer them, you can, but I'm really looking for like feedback on whether or not it's a good question to include in the list. Okay. So you'll answer, but then also give me feedback. This is the prototype list you're going to use for everybody else. I think so. What comes to mind when I say best day ever? Oh man. Um, I have a short term memory. So probably my, I took my son hunting Elijah and, um, we we're up in the, the tree stand. Okay. And I was like, the whole time I was trying to feel him out. I'm like, man, is this like, is this too much for him? And da da da. And he leans back and he goes, Dad. I go, what's up, buddy? And we'd been sitting there for like four hours of silence. We got there before the sun came up. Yeah. He had took a little nap. And then he goes, this is the best day ever. Oh, and I was like, oh my God. I'm a good dad. I did it. So how old is Elijah and what were you hunting? Nine and uh, I killed my first buck. No way. Mm-hmm. See, I'm... I love deer because there's so many deer in our neighborhood and there's one deer that I think is it became tame like it lives with goats and if you go up and meet it it like comes up and licks you like I have a yeah. video that I they're took disgusting couple... animals I don't know why you let that what? happen that's what I've been saying what are you they're, talking about I'm not even joking they're off they're gross dude that's what they're so every beautiful. time she wants that thing to lick her arm I'm like stop hey look <laughs> at its belly and then why? see if you ever let it they're covered in ticks yeah, and, stuff, and they're gross. I just blur my eyes though, and then it just looks like beautiful fur from a distance. Yeah. yeah. So with hunting, what like, what's your motivation to eat the meat to just yeah. hunt and then yeah. you're done? Yeah, my uncle always told me that like you don't really appreciate your food until you kill it. It's like a weirdly spiritual experience. Yeah. Like, I was so, it's so crazy because you're bored for like three or four hours. Right. And then this one was like 200 yards away it had just slowly walked out there had these big antlers and and it was it, for florida it was a six point but um it had this you know his girlfriend his daughter or whoever with him and i'm <laughs> oh, like no. i'm gonna take that dude's life in front of yeah his family you know so i was like nervous i like i like i put up my rifle and i was like shaking and i'm like oh, i can't do it i can't do it yeah and i put it up and elijah's like are you gonna do it i'm like i don't know oh. i'm trying to figure that out you yeah know? <laughs> Yeah, and then um, and then I did it. Yeah, and you're like, dude, I <laughs> the the tree stand is probably like this big. Yeah, you know, so I like I got up and did like six little laps real fast <laughs> and was like, holy shit, holy shit, I did yeah. it. Yeah, did he just go straight down? Yeah, okay. like literally, like I snapped my finger and he just collapsed, which is good. Yes, because the second time I did. I shot it while it was running, and I hit its knee while oh, it was no. diving, oh. and both of his legs came off at the knee. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. And oh. then by the time I got to him, he was dragging no, himself to make it no. 20 times worse. And I was like, I'm going to cry. Off? Yeah, I like, like, shot them off? So the first one, the first one, <laughs> the first, the first one, the, the right leg came completely off as if you had oh. thrown a stick. No. And then the left leg was spinning around like a helicopter. Stop. And I was like, oh, God. That reminds me of, like, the saddest thing ever. When a, when a deer got its legs blown no. <laughs> and dragged itself into a tall grass. That's horrifying. <laughs> oh like, I probably would have passed out if I was in if I was responsible for doing that to the animal. But I, um, this is, like, a super sad story. But there was this baby horse that... My friends had horses that they didn't know were pregnant. And so it was like the most amazing, miraculous thing to like watch this horse have a baby. And you're just like, oh my God, there's a baby horse out here now. This is so crazy. So we 
got to know this little horse. He was so adorable, so fun. And they had built this trench around their yard to like, I guess, allow for the flood waters to kind of collect versus flooding their whole yard. Like, I don't know what the reason for building this trench was. Like a moat? A moat, yeah. In the middle of their pasture where the horses were. So the horses weren't used to it yet. And so they let this baby horse out and he was like so excited to go out and run around. And he dove across the moat and just like miscalculated and his leg literally broke and was like going around in a circle mm. as he ran around. It was one of the most traumatic experiences because we just had to be there waiting for the vet to come and like the horses were like neighing at each other. It was so sad. That is terrible to watch. What I wonder about that is like, why Why do humans like, if I break my finger, you don't have to teach me to coddle it. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Like, if I break my hand, I'm just going to do it. But for some reason, when, <laughs> when my dog broke his arm, my dog got hit by a car. Oh. And when he broke his arm, it was almost like he was like, <laughs> Look how broke it is! You know, you're like, dude, why are you, that probably makes it so much worse. Yeah, it's so true. Why do they do that, oh, dude? So this deer that was Dumb crawling animals. away, did you eventually, did you like say a prayer before you ended its life? Because this, this, no. you had to be up close to no, it. No, I shot it in the back of the head as fast as possible. I oh. literally walked up to it and I was like, ah. <laughs> And shot his brains and this out. This was the same <laughs> hunting trip with Elijah. No. Okay. No. God. No. So no, he didn't he have to witness that. No, I went back. Yeah, I went back for that and regretted it. Oof. I love how this question of what was your best day ever turned into like, <laughs> what was the most traumatic experience with animals? It's just to tell on my life. This is just. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, that segues that's perfectly. That's the best day yeah. ever. <laughs> There's a, that's it. That segue. Well, first of all, I mean, I guess that's that's probably a, a good. Because I, I was adorable. Your son saying this is the best day. Especially when they say it quietly, like after they're like, this yeah. is just the And he doesn't day. know the victory that I had when he said that. Like I yeah. literally sat there like just high on life. Like, oh, I am the best dad. This is yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Did he always want to go hunting and this was No, a... absolutely okay. not. No. No. Elijah's a very soft boy. Yeah. <laughs> My little Elijah. He uh, He's very sensitive. He likes to talk about his emotion a That's lot. That's good. That's yeah. good. Especially yeah. for a little boy. You... Uh, Unless somebody upsets him, he's you're gonna know how he feels. But like, if, like if a girl or something like embarrasses him, he'll just, Aww. yeah. So is that kind of you growing up, or is he the opposite? Where no, dude, <laughs> <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> no. I don't, you could either be somebody I don't who. No, Emilio's been a little emotional from the day I met him. I was gonna yeah. say you I seem little, like you, you had wear the Zelda heart. emo hair pretty I, hardcore. I did. I I've always been like I've always been like. Uh, uh, Internal warfare type. Yeah. Like, he's like, wears his heart on his sleeve. Right. I'm but have like, you learned to kind of let it out more? Or is it more humor that I'm you just good. I'm just good at communicating it now. Yeah. I'll just be like, wow, I really hate you now. Wow. <laughs> like, well, but like, <laughs> it's an exaggeration, but like, yeah. hey, I'm mad at you right this second. Right. Versus Stop talking it. to me. Yeah. Yeah. I probably don't deliver it smoothly, but. I think we're all working on that. Every human is yeah. working on how to manage their emotions because we're not really taught how to do it. Because as a kid, I'm sure being a dad, it's very hard to be like, okay, the emotions from this child are too much or too crazy. Like, I don't want to deal with it, but also you have to deal with it. So I have to teach you how to do it in the proper way without it taking over my day. Like, how do you deal with that? Just ignore it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Legit, like, half of the stuff that they're doing is so over my head. Like, I'll just be like... So what does everybody want for dinner? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. You know, watching them like the other day. And then they're so different too. Like uh, Elijah and Ronan were both playing video games the other day and they got to the point where they were, they were silently punching each other in the face. Like, was that like they were like, fuck you. Oh, and like, like softly. But yeah. So that I wouldn't notice. And then I turn around and they both gave me side eye at the same time. And I was just like, are we done? They're like, <laughs> okay. Sounds like you have very whispery sons. No, Ronan is a wild animal. You guys haven't really, no, I, ever I really interacted with Ronan. No, yeah, I was there a, the day that Elijah was born. Yeah. I have a picture of him on my phone from literally him being a brand new baby in the hospital. Yeah, and you but, guys remember, like, I would bring Elijah in like a car carrier. Yes, or whatever. I was too young to have a kid. Dude. I was <laughs> Jesus. Just walking around with this thing, like, can anybody help? I remember uh, you actually being so afraid of handling a baby, and then when you had your own, like, you are the person that I'll talk about with other people where it's like, yeah, you don't, they're so fragile, and then you, like, 
realized with babies how you could actually hold them yeah. and especially them being your own and you'd like football them and like flip them around you're like it's I'm just I can hold them so much better now that I have my own I would just carry Elijah around by his ankle just upside down just <laughs> just caveman stuff yeah just mine that's good that's <laughs> healthy behavior um so my next question what comes to mind when I say worst day ever <sighs> dude a lot. Um, I don't think I have like I don't really marinate on on uh, anything. Anything I find negative, I just try to like brush it, you know, aside or whatever. Mm. I mean, I'm, when I was younger, I had a, a big problem with holding on to things. Like, you know, if somebody did something, I'd hold on to that about them, and right. I always have my guard up and stuff. But now you just got to recognize people for their, you know, some people come with bad behavior, and you just whatever but um don't really nothing how do you change from because i have that thing where if somebody does something that offends me or whatever it's very hard for me to be like and that was just a moment that happened like maybe they don't know how much it upset me whatever move on from it it's very hard because i think i'm somebody who's been betrayed before and all that and so for me it's very much like i don't want that to happen again do you so, think about so like say I, I had done you wrong would you think about that every time you saw me it would be depending on how how bad it was like or would you've you said just be things, like i don't like that guy d again it, it depends on if you did something malicious or if you just like said something like you're funny and you've made jokes but i always know it's coming from a place of love but if somebody does something where it's like oh you were trying to hurt me it's very hard for me to be like who would do that to you <sighs> Dude, there's been people <laughs> like my own family. They're like top of the list of things that people have said that I'm just like, oh, just like little pessimistic things or or like no. they go out of their way to try to like, yeah, gouge deep. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's terrible. And I've learned at this point that it's it's healthier if there's something that's very, very like brings up a lot of emotion that it's a good idea to sometimes just take time away from that person because through time maybe that's that's probably what happened to you is just as we get older we start to prioritize things differently and so if somebody offends you or hurts you it's like yeah with enough distance between when that happened and when you see them or talk to them again it it can be forgotten but if it's someone that i see every single day and like every time i see them they're being mean which i don't think there's anyone in my life that does that but yeah i don't yeah, there's just shitty people i mean there's just people that I, like i always co call it compatibility to to sound nice but yeah there's definitely a lot of people i'm not compatible with you know and do you just not have them in your life or are you just like i mean yeah as much i mean, i don't really interact with anybody at all to be honest like <laughs> just my close circle of people but like yeah. other than that i don't have like uh like a social group that I and then every group chat that I'm in, I mute immediately. The second somebody puts me in a group chat, I go, I hate you guys. And then Wh I why? What does it do to you? And the, dude, my I hate my phone vibrating. Yeah. And it, and with work and stuff, it's already vibrating all the time. And yeah. then, you know, they'll just send memes and so, which is they're funny to like skim through on like my free time and stuff. But like, yeah. um, yeah, I don't I don't really have like a uh, like a when we were teenagers, we had like groups of friends. I don't really. I'm just busy, you know. Yeah. So I really get that. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. And do you find it's hard to make new friends when you're older? I feel like. I feel like. Now, like I'll just relate to somebody, and that'll be nice, and then. It doesn't have to be like a friendship or something. It's no, just... it could just be like a bromance for like a day. <laughs> You know what I mean? We'll yeah. like kiss on the lips and then that's it. <laughs> just get a little taste. Just a little like, mm, I'll remember you. you know? oh. Very nice. What about like on the worst day ever thing? And, and you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to, but I know your dad was uh, like, there was at one point where your dad was in the hospital, right? That would and be also okay. follow up question. How is he? he he's I mean, awesome. I love your dad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He asks about you all the time, man. Uh, that would definitely be up there. Um, I, dude, I, you know what's weird is how I handled that situation is not how I thought I would handle anything happening to him. What so, happened? So he got, he got diagnosed with, M he thought he was having a stroke. So on Easter, um, I don't, I don't remember the year, but it was like, uh, I think four or five years ago now, but on Easter he had numbness to oh. the left or right side of his body. Yeah. And, and I wasn't there. I, I forget what I, I was, uh, oh, I was living at the shop and, um. 
anyways, I've, me and my dad have always been super close. And uh, uh, he was working with Alex at the time. And anyways, he wakes up and he's numb on one side of his butt, like very numb and super dizzy mm. and can't. And he's got like extreme vertigo. And anyways, so they take him to the hospital and um, they... I think on the way there, they thought he was having a stroke because those, those are like the symptoms for a stroke. Right. But it just like, it never got worse, but it never got better. And then they had a hard time figuring out what it was because MS is a hard thing to diagnose. And then he was like on bed rest and losing all this weight, couldn't shave his face. He was basically just sitting there with his eyes closed. And like, wow. dude, I compl- what's crazy about that is like, you never know how you're going to handle something until it happens. Right. And I couldn't even go see him. Really? Yeah. And I think, I think it upset like my mom and my sister that like nobody's ever really given me shit for it but i think that like probably let them down a little bit but i just couldn't like i saw him one time and i was like this is not how i see this man yeah you know what i mean like i had him on this like crazy pedestal and and whatever and i was like this is hard for me yeah, yeah. it's terrifying it's like that's your dad yeah yeah so like, that was that if, was definitely if, rough if he's not good none of us are good right right yeah. exactly yeah he and he's like the and, and and if you've ever met my dad he's like the funniest like goofy <laughs> dude's never had a bad day in his life you know like yeah. or he makes it seem like he hasn't um he's uh he's cool to be around and so that was like crazy but now he's fine dude really now, he's living the dream other than than uh he's just constantly working on uh their house mm. like my, my mom keeps him busy but nice. uh yeah he's leaner now and uh does not give a shit about <laughs> anybody's opinion dude he's had this friend named donald <laughs> oh no no it wasn't donald it was this other guy this truck driver anyways the guy goes to Northport for like a little thing he had to do and his car breaks down and he's like, let me call Raphael, you know, and my, so I'm just sitting there with my dad and, uh, my dad's like, Hey, what's up, man? You know, he always answers the phone wild. Hey, what's going on, man? Yeah. I, no, I can't do that, man. I can't do that. The guy had been like, Hey man, can you, uh, come pick me up? My dad's like, yeah, no, I'm not that friend. Yeah. And it offended my dad so bad that he said, don't, wow. told him to just never call him. Yeah, he's like, don't ever call me for that kind of stuff. And then hung up, and I was like, what? That, that guy, that guy's in need, man. <laughs> and he called you because you're his friend. He's like, not that type of friend. Wow. And then goes back to his video game like it didn't happen. I was like, dude. Savage. I was, uh, Alex, you're you're like that though. You're the type of person. No, 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 no. You will always be there for someone in need, oh. for sure, for sure. But you are the, the type. Guy to tell you now, sorry. No, no, no. I was like, what is happening? No, no, no. <laughs> Alex is the most like you need something. You will be there for sure. But you are not afraid to say when you don't want to do something. Like if I'm like, come to our house, Alex. He's like, no, and he just goes, and I'm like, oh, okay. Or yeah. like, no, stay longer. He's like, nah, I'm gonna leave. Yeah. I'm so bad at saying I have to leave or trying to get someone to leave the house. Like that. Dude. <laughs> So I think bad. the strangest memory I have of Alex is, oh, this is I, I, gonna be fun. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, I just didn't know what to Back think. Back to the questions. <laughs> Ryan and Alex were living together in your guys' old uh, in Serenade. Uh, yeah, yeah, in Serenade. And then uh, uh, I walked in, and and Alex had six hundred bucks sitting there, and I picked it up, and like a douchebag, I threw. I like was like making it rain <laughs> or something. Yeah. And he very coldly just stared. <laughs> and then when I turned around, he slapped the back of my neck harder than any man's ever slapped it. And I turned around, I'm like, the fuck was that? And he was like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> was like, that is so not Alex. What? Yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> Dude, it was the weirdest. I was like, is he mad? And then Ryan's like, <laughs> and then we so just Ryan went to the gym. And I'm like, is no one going to address the assault? <laughs> Especially like, the, the back of the neck. That's dude, like a very personal dude, place. Dude, had it been anybody one. else, I, I think it would have, I think we would have just went to war. But I was like, <laughs> I don't even know what to do because it's Alex. And I'd just be upset with myself if I really made him mad. I was just trying right. to be funny. Clearly the joke didn't go over well. <laughs> yeah, you know? Alex, you, Alex is someone that is never mad. Like that's what's kind of wild. Oh, is, well, we've like, worked together and you get mad. I guess I've there's some stress with that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, back to the questions, I guess. That's a wild story. <laughs> yeah, watch out for that guy. <laughs> ooh, ooh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Were you the bully or the bullied? Bullied. No, you were yeah. not. Oh, yeah. Tell me about yeah. it. 
So all through elementary school, I had a hard time with confrontation. So people would do things and like just dumb stuff, man. Like you get pants, they rip my oh shirt my and stuff like that. And like I was like afraid to do anything back. And then in ninth grade, yeah, yeah, ninth grade, a senior was doing the same shit in uh, in guitar class, man. And I literally just had enough of it. And uh, I remember my mom would brown bag my lunch every day. Everybody yeah. talked shit about it for some reason. Aww. It's like, I mean, what? But that didn't even bother me. And yeah. I was so conditioned to just like letting things go at that point. Whatever, right. dude. But this guy, for some reason, he drove me nuts. I took the brown bag lunch and <laughs> smashed it in his face. And he stands up. I'll never forget this. His name was Jake. He stands up and he has a cowboy hat and he's like very large. Yeah. He's like, Get your ass outside, boy. Uh-oh. I was like, damn it, dude. I'm going to get messed up. So yeah. we walk out the back doors or whatever. And, um, and you know, I had done, like, a li little bit of martial arts here and there. Yeah. So I walk out and put my hands up. And I punch this Did kid. you do, like, the, like, karate? I was like, <laughs> I threw, I, I picked up sand and threw it in his face. <laughs> uh no, I uh, I walked out and put my hands up, and his hands are down, and he's just oh. like, "Let's do it." And I was like, "All right, let's do it." And I got my hands up, and he's like, "All right, let's do it." I'm like, "But your hands are still down." So eventually, he slaps me in my face. Wow. Which costed him the whole fight because I beat the living dog. No, shit out you of this did kid. not. Yeah, it was like all the years of whatever. I grabbed <laughs> I grabbed him by the back of the head and started hitting him, and then as he fell forward, I started kneeing him in the face, and it was to the point where like. It was one of those things where everyone was like, oh, fuck, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Emilio, let it go, man. It was a brown bag lunch, dude. <laughs> but no, this is years. You're right. If you finally get the chance to do something, like, the rage will take over. Yeah. And just be bad. like, this is all the people that made fun of me. And then at that point, anybody, I mean, it wasn't like I had some short fuse at that point, but, uh. Like, there was this other kid, Mike, who would fuck with me all the time, and he was, like, half my size. And then, uh, like, one day I was just having a bad day, and he, um, I, forget, I, I don't honestly don't I think he yanked my shirt mm -hmm. and was like, come here, dude, and, and whatever. And when I did, I just hit him in the face, dropped him wow. to the ground, and was like, don't fucking grab my shirt like that, man. Yeah. And then after that, it was like, cool, I don't get bullied anymore. Wow. So you stood up for yourself. Yeah. Wow. Were you a fighter after that, or was it like I just needed to do a couple things? There was like then... a short. There was like a short period uh, in my teens where, like, you know, I thought that was the way to solve problems, you know, yeah. or confrontation and shit. But I was never like go out and look for fights. Like I had friends that would legit be like, "I'm gonna start shit." You know, mm. like, well, you're dumb. You yeah. Know? I uh, no, I was never into that. But I wasn't afraid of it at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then and then when I traded started training with like Dean Ort and stuff like that, it's like all fear of that goes away. So is Dean Ort a friend? David Norton. Huh. I, I don't, don't know. I she, don't know. I don't know if she knows David. Sorry. Norton. What? I don't. Yeah, that was before her time. Yeah, before my time. Some oh, well, that's not the right screen. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Cut to the switcher. Oh, fancy. Yeah. People get to see what you look at. Yeah. Um so on the question of bully bullied. Um, Alex, I've heard that you were a bully. He's a total bully. He grabs the mic slowly. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can hear the squeak on the mic. <laughs> Alex was a bully when I was younger. I heard Alex bullied Ryan. <laughs> he was a part of the crew that would bully me. <laughs> no. Yeah. This is truth right now? That was like elementary school, though. That was not... Uh, I wasn't a bully. <laughs> You hear that? Sounds like he's, ju he's he was, justifying some. He was a thug. <laughs> see, here's the thing. I could definitely see that. Kids. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> kids, when they're younger, I think are so much more savage than when they're older. Like, obviously, when you're older, you have power and strength, and the fights are crazy. But like, kids are mean when they're younger because they just say things, and everything is you. You want to be accepted, like your brown bag lunch. Like, why was that such a thing? It's because it was a thing that the kids decided mattered. And oh, then it really th mattered to you because yeah. it mattered to them stupidly, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they would, they, and they would cut me deep too, man. Because, like, we weren't poor, but we weren't, like, well off by any means. Right. And they'd be like, oh, broke ass can't get a lunchbox. I'm like, well, first of all, who the fuck do you see carrying a lunchbox? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of, I don't even know how to take that insult, you know? Yeah. And then, and then, uh, sorry. Oh, are you in oh a my group, mom's group calling chat? me, dude. Oh, really? Ma, I'm on a podcast right now.
me and Alex were working on Brio, and uh, we walked. We would walk across to where the like the Chipotle and and stuff is or whatever. And I had never seen this man in confrontation. We didn't get in a fight or nothing, mm. but the way he dealt with this situation. So this guy was being a dick. And we're hot, man, and we got you know we we had the OSHA stuff, so we're in like boots and jeans and like you're hot physic, like you look hot is what you mean. Yeah, he looked okay. sexy <laughs> as fuck, and uh, and no, we're just aggravated, and okay. we and we are walking through this parking lot, and this dude in this nicer car like just keeps as if as if he's gonna hit us oh, or whatever. No, and uh, and Alex just turns around, and I you know I forget the exact words or whatever, but he was like, "What are we doing?" And just stare, and he's like knees to his bumper, <laughs> just staring at the guy. And I was like, "Oh shit, Alex is ready for it." Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Were you just like hiding behind him, or were you also? No, no, fuck that. I was. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Yeah, what's up?" No, I'm definitely a lot braver when Emilio's around. <laughs> That's for sure. Makes sense. I think everybody is. Yeah. No. True. I mean, I gonna, yeah. I don't know. You have that crazy vibe. Everyone's like, that. everyone's like, everyone's like, my friend will fuck you up, and I'm like. <laughs> Ooh! Don't drag me into this. Yeah, I'm not. No, I won't. <laughs> I'm like show him the head tattoo. Yeah, exactly. You show just him take the it head off. Yeah, that's why I got it so I can just take the hat off and be like, "You want to fuck with that?" It's like You're an like, alter exactly. ego that comes out. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I I can appreciate somebody who can handle themselves well, but I gotta say, it scares the crap out of me when somebody's like about to fight. Like just walking somewhere and someone just like comes out of nowhere and starts getting weird. Oh, like gets your it's adrenaline like, going? Well, it's like watching two dogs about to fight where you're just like, stop, 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 stop. Like this could get bad. And you can just see the animal come out. That's the same with people. Like you can see something happens with their eyes and you're just like, stop it. Like snap out yeah. of it. Like come back. Because fighting is just, you become an animal. It does nothing for me. I, uh, nine times out of ten, I'm like, I got money on red shirt. <laughs> 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 You know. So it excites you, but maybe not for you personally. Not yeah. after you had to beat up. What was his name? What was the the big guy that you Jake. beat up? Jake. Yeah. Oh, what's <laughs> here's the resolve to that story. He became your BFF. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we kissed. Um, <laughs> no, when I got arrested for the first time, uh, he was the guy that does the check in. So he's not like no a, way. Yeah, but so you sit handcuffed on this bench, and the dude who. Uh, uh, intakes or like whatever. Books you. Yeah, yeah. Like sitting there on the computer, he's like, "Mr. Reyes," and I'm <gasps> like, "Who is that guy?" No fucking way. And he was like, what? "So I went in, I went in. There was this girl and this guy, and there was an exchange between all three of us or whatever. So he hyper focused on that, which I didn't put my hands on or anything like that. Uh, uh, but it looked that way when I got arrested. Oh. And he was like, "So I see you like." putting your hands on women uh -oh. and I was like clearly I like putting my hands <gasps> on men Jake and he was just like <laughs> so so he remembered <laughs> so <laughs> got him wow what a full circle moment um speaking of moments what is your proudest moment oh man that's I've got kids so that always um Elijah is like a hundred percent A student, all oh. A honor roll and stuff like that. That's on. That's amazing. Is it raining? Yes. Yeah. We're Welcome here. to Florida. I know. If you want to get out of the rain, walk ten feet. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Um, yeah. Probably. Yeah. I don't know, man. I've got so many things that I'm proud of, though. Like I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of my kids. I'm proud of, uh, dude, my family. Everybody in my family uh, is just awesome. Everyone's living a good life. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just. Uh, just proud of it all. That's amazing. That's yeah. very lucky. You know, not a lot of people can say that. I think it's a perception thing, though. You think so? I think I've just changed my perspective. Yeah, I was a, I was a, everything happens to me type of guy yeah. for a while. You know. And then what made you change your mind? I broke. What does that mean? <laughs> I just, a guy. I, I don't know. You just get tired of being like everything's everybody else's fault, and you're like, you know what? I should just do something about that. You know. So you went from playing the victim to what would you say your philosophy is now? Man, honestly, it's as simple as just I just try to enjoy each day. You know, that is hard enough alone sometimes. You ever just wake up and you just feel defeated? The second you get up, you're like, yeah, ah, today's not my day. Yeah. Yep. I try to avoid those, you know. 
So how do you avoid it though? Because if you feel that way, I mean, I had about two years of my life where I legitimately, when I would wake up, I would instantly be like, oh no, and I wanted to just go back to sleep. And I like I didn't realize it was depression until mm. way way later. And I looked back, I'm like, that is crazy. Like at the time, I just wanted to be asleep all the time. Yeah. And it was very hard because I knew that wasn't healthy and it wasn't good, but it just like kept going and going and going and moving to a piece of property where I have to take care of animals was the thing that brought me out of it. It wasn't like I have to just change my mind. Yeah. So I don't even know how somebody who has the same life circumstances changes their mind. Like how do you go from feeling defeated to then being like, okay, I have to just make the most of this day. Um, I have a lot of hobbies. Yeah. Like a bunch of stuff that I tinker around with, my yard being one of the bigger ones. But um, I don't know. I just like I uh, I remember having a conversation with one of the guys that I work with where I was like, dude, I'm just choosing because like, you know, we complain just to blow off steam. Um, everybody does. But I I got to the point where I was like, dude, I'm just going to have a good day. Like, I'm just tired of having bad days. I'm going to have yeah. a good day, you know, and and then. And then you learn to just not be so upset when things go wrong, you know? Shit's gonna go wrong. You just kinda, okay, well, how do we fix it now that it's wrong or, or whatever, so. Instead of trying to avoid things going wrong, because a lot of people are afraid, like, well, what if this happens? What if this happens? And it's almost like stalling the goodness of the day versus some people might be like, well, when it goes wrong, mm -hmm. we'll fix it there. Like, Ryan and I, we've learned that our philosophies can be most, um, presented accurately in this is it a metaphor the cooking and the cleaning thing i guess we'll, we'll just say it's a metaphor sure so basically if we're gonna make something i'm the one who goes very slow and like if there's like a drop of mess i'll clean it up as i go and i like put things away as i go so that when i'm done with the thing like everything's already clean and i go very carefully to mm. like not create a mess ryan is like i create the biggest mess ever because I will then clean it up. Like I like to clean it up at right. the end. And I'm just like, I can't understand that because it actually stresses me out <laughs> to see like loose, just like going about your thing and like touching things with buttery hands. Like, I'm just like, I'm keeping track of my mind of like, I got to wipe that off now. I got to do this and the that. The image she paints of you cooking is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just I'm just thing. picturing you chucking flour at the cabinets. <laughs> oh, I'll clean it when I'm done. Literally with spaghetti, right? Like seeing if it's ready. I like take it out and like drain it a little bit and like blow it off. And I take a bite. I'm like, okay, it just needs to go. Ryan literally takes it. He's like, whoosh, and just throws it at the wall. And it's like, and falls down and he's like that All one's right, I done guess. yeah exactly like exactly. what's the the Swedish the chef on the Muppets where he's like the salad's flying everywhere yes. that's so funny yes if anybody watches the Muppets I don't know. <laughs> yeah it's Alex, been a while just reveal the secret <laughs> ooh speaking of which next question you ready? Are you enjoying these, by the way, or is this? Yes, okay, no, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, Stressing me out. <laughs> he's like, which one am I gonna have to answer? <laughs> Tell me a secret. A secret? Yes. Oh man, I don't have secrets, honestly. Uh, hmm. Dude, do you guys remember Anthony Lombard? Oh, yeah. Like one of my yeah. best friends ever. Dude, one of the worst feelings I've ever had in my entire life was kissing him on his lips. <laughs> And Why does every story end with and then I kissed him on the lips? Because it was like trauma, dude. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so we were at, uh, he was going to UCF and these two girls were hanging out with us and we wanted them to do things and they were like, all right, well, we'll do that if you guys kiss. The girl said this to you guys. Yeah, yeah. Emilio, did you know that they were tricking you? So no, I know they that did they it. were tricking. Oh, they did okay, it. okay, okay, yeah, they did okay. It. That's fine. Yeah, but so. they tricked you first. So what happened? Well, like <laughs> we were like, oh, I was like, oh, this is my best friend. That's easy, dude. And, and then I remember, through <gasps> oh. my mustache, I could feel his mustache. <laughs> <laughs> so that your mustaches did the avatar link dude, up. Dude, that shit sent chills down my spine. And so like, like in a good way. No. <laughs> no, as if like I was looking at a dead body for the first time, chills down my spine. Wow. Like, oh, well, I'm not gay. Uh, <laughs> wow. So that was the moment you knew. Yeah, you know, I guess. I guess before that, I was like, I could be gay. Whatever, man. But it just took a mustache. Yeah. Linking with your mustache. Yeah. Maybe I could still be gay and just not kiss. 
the guy. Yeah. Or just shave your mustache. They would have to shave their mustache. <laughs> you know, yeah, that, my mustache staying. didn't bother me. Yeah, it was his mustache. Felt weird. I mean, that was a great secret. Anybody else want to share a secret? <laughs> They're saying no. Okay. Well, dude, I feel like these are in the perfect order because this is going great. Tell me an embarrassing story. That was one of them. Uh, <laughs> Do you have another one that you want to share? Dude, we can move on. When I first started dating, this is one of a billion. Yeah, I could I could tell you one, one a day. Um, <laughs> when I first started dating one of my ex girlfriends. The f she was like very hard for me to like woo like I had to put mm -hmm. in a lot of work for like eight months okay. of chasing this girl and she finally spends the night for the first time and and we dated for a long time after this it was a great relationship but uh, the very first time she ever slept over I felt like I was getting sick mm. so I fart in my sleep a <gasps> lot dude just a regular thing that I do it okay. comes with the package but. I woke up to myself <laughs> farting liquid. <laughs> like a sharded, dude. It was awful. And then here's the thing. Wait, you woke up, so was she still asleep so she didn't know what was happening, or was she awake realizing that you sharded? She's one of those people that... She pretended to be asleep to I don't, save your dignity. I, well, you could never know because she sleeps like this. <laughs> that's it. Like that's the, There's no twitching. There's no snoring. Yeah. It's just her eyes are closed, and you're like... I'm going to assume she's asleep. <laughs> but there was many times after that where I questioned it because she'd be asleep and I'd be like, babe. And she'd be like, what? Like that? And yeah. I'm like, oh, man, I don't think you were asleep the first oh. time. But anyways, <laughs> so for a good, like, I was in a predicament because I was like, I need to slowly get out of bed. <laughs> but I don't want to wake her up because she'll smell it. <laughs> but the problem Ew. is that, like, a fart will go away. <laughs> Shit no. in your pants yeah. doesn't go away. And it could drip down the leg. Well, it wasn't that much. <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh what I was just it was like a permanent Dutch oven to the blankets. <laughs> yeah. Like that's that shit smell is just under the blanket. So yeah. I'm like, what am I gonna do, man? Yeah. So I like pinched the hardest penny I've ever pinched in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and straight didn't even bend the knees just got to the bathroom so was it like you were able to keep it under the radar or was she like i smelled something a little weird last night what happened no no she's not forward like that at all she was probably so, just like how did you sleep <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask her about it uh, tell her about it down the road i did and and she she was like I have no idea what you're talking about. So she like, you don't know if she's just pretending to not know, but it was like really the worst sign of her life. She or... is so like nice and empathetic. She would, she was absolutely the type that'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, like, yeah, percent. Oh. And you, you just like cleaned it up, went back to bed. No big deal. Or were you like changed my underwear? It had got on, Hopefully. it had got on my underwear yeah. and, no. uh, I threw them away. I just tossed them. I was like, Those are gone. Did you like stuff them underneath other trash so that just in case she like opened the trash can, she wouldn't be like, what? Just, I had the crotch up, <laughs> inside out. Oh. Uh, well, how do you bring that up down the line? I'd be like, hey, do you remember when I shit the bed? It's me, dude. I was literally just like, you know, the first time you slept over after we banged, I shit myself. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> Oh, oh my god. This poor girl. Yeah. I know. I know. For so many reasons. Yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah. This is this is the least of it. <laughs> oh. Um I mean that's about the worst. The worst it could go. Um well, it gets worse. Is there I'm being I'm being vanilla. <laughs> is there anything about you that you wish was different? This can be physically, emotionally. Dude, I just wish I could uh yeah, dude, I get a belly so easy. Mm. If I eat like a couple donuts, I'll put on. So I was, I went to New York like a month ago. Before I went to New York, I was 169, and I like the way that I look. And then <laughs> yesterday I was 185. I'm like, what is going on, dude? Whoa! And just I just yeah. from some donuts. Um, I wasn't eating carbs for a while. Okay. And then I introduced carbs and just... And your body was like... Yeah. 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 So for anybody that's thinking about doing keto, the shit comes right back. <laughs> yeah. Keto is either like 
you do it because like we know somebody who has to have the keto diet mm-hmm. and dropped a bunch of weight and is like the happiest, healthiest person ever. Yeah. Fully transformed his whole life. Um, I did it for a month and I got very bored with eating salmon and eggs. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I just like the lifestyle. If I don't have to do it, I don't think I really want to do it. Isn't it crazy the mental warfare you go through on food cravings? Yes. It is like legit addiction that you're fighting. It's yeah. so crazy. Because I there was times where so I started with the carnivore diet. I mm. had only I was only eating meat, which a lot of people want to try that. It gave me diverticulosis. What's that? It's when the it's the shape of your intestines. What they do is like they're they're normally like this. Well you get these uh I guess pockets, you'd say. Mm. They 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 have like these little wings and food can get stuck in oh, them no. and you can get swollen intestines and stuff and it's from a ultra uh high fat diet with low fiber, I think. Mm. And um which is what that diet was. Right. And uh I love the way that I looked though. And I felt great, but I would pace around my kitchen like trying to avoid the fridge, but just like, I'd just stare at it and would be like, I should do something else. And then I'd open it and be like, I shouldn't open this. Mm. And then I'd walk around, come back, open it again. I shouldn't do that. And I'd see, like, stuff that I'd never even want. Like, I got addicted after I started eating foods, uh, carbs again. My kids get applesauce squeeze things. Oh, yeah. And, dude, I was mowing through them. I've, really? There's nothing I've ever even looked at and been like, I should eat that. Yeah. Like, whoa. And now, now, even now, it's like, a, I'll go home and I'll eat five of those. I'll listen so to don't... this podcast back and be like, I need five of those. That's weird that, so you don't just do the like big old applesauce, like you need the squeezies. Ew, that grosses me out. There's They sell just big tubs yeah. of applesauce. How does yes. that gross you out and the squeezes doesn't? The squeezes to me. I like the little, well, no, it's the, it's the, it's the scooping it and putting the lid back on it for later that, that weirds me out with oh, that. Oh, that's the best. The big the big yogurts drive me nuts with that too. That's I love gross. The big I yogurt. like the little yogurts. I hate the little yogurt. You know why? I like the, it's not enough. It's not enough. <laughs> but two two little yogurts is too much. Yeah. So I'm like I I use so I eat too too good is the brand like two the number two good. Right. Um, and I, so the, the gross part is the big ones, you have to always mix it because it like has the liquid at the top. I think that's gross. And the little guys, you can kind of like shake it before you open the it. The applesauce does the same thing with the juice and the big ones. It's does gross. it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, everybody has their preferred way, way of eating applesauce. I just feel like it's very wasteful if you're <laughs> mowing through all of them. Like a kid eats one, right? Yeah. And you as an adult, you have to eat like five before you're satisfied. Yeah. Do you I- recycle? No, I'm, I, I can <laughs> no, I don't recycle. I can feel my, I can feel my age when I'm eating though, because like, I'll be stressed out about something, and then I now I have apple cinnamon. Oh, little ones. Dude, okay. Next level good. Really. Uh, but I'll open them up and I'll be like, and I can like see myself your feet. <laughs> physically. That's how happy I am. I'm like physically enjoying. <laughs> eating the applesauce and yeah. then like I'll get to the very end of it and like scrape the yes. bowl extra good and then you know <laughs> and then throw it away and anybody watching me is like Jesus dude, you really you enjoyed open another that. one <laughs> <laughs> like there's more in there oh my gosh applesauce would have never guessed especially the kids the kids squeezy kind uh did you guys do you guys see on the last podcast we did the one there's two comments. One was my buddy Justin. You should not read comments. And then the other <laughs> was it mean? I what made happened? somebody really mad. What really? What happened? I, I it didn't just see says it. clearly they didn't watch the whole podcast. Yeah. Uh, but he goes, "You're not a general contractor. You're just a, a handyman, or something <laughs> like that." And I was what like, "What a dick!" And I was like, "I'm gonna kiss that guy when I see him." <laughs> He's right. Wow. That's really sad. <laughs> that makes me so sad. Dude, it's all good, man. Hey, some people just bad dude might have had a badass a, a bad day that day. It yeah, was not like, a badass day. No, Very not sad like, day. Yeah, like he was just like, fuck this brown guy. That is so rude when somebody says that and like obviously they probably went about their day, no big deal. But like the fact that you can remember it, obviously it's floating around in there. Oh, when I first read it, I was like Oh, dude, man, this guy clearly doesn't like handymen. <laughs> He's using yeah. it as a derogatory remark. And right. Second of all, uh, I'm fucking rich. So 
<laughs> Joke's on you. Wife cheated on with some handyman or something like that. <laughs> some rich handyman. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. He's watching this one right now, like planning it. <laughs> Just planning, finding my house. Yep. Just ending it all for me. You're giving him way too much cannon fodder. Is that what it is? Oh, this uh, next one. This next one, Emilio. Mm-hmm. You ready? <laughs> What age did I lose my virginity? Well, well, you can answer that if you want, no. but that is not one of my questions. No, I was I was twenty seven. No, yeah. no, you weren't. <laughs> you had a kid at like <laughs> twenty one. You're like I did it without ever having sex. All right, you ready? ready? What happens when we die? I think I don't know, man. I had this late. What I do know is that this lady told me. I know what this lady told me. She, uh, I got a, oh, the lady that ended up tucking the crystal under my nutsack. <gasps> From the last one, the gooch. The gooch. The gooch lady. <laughs> the grundle. Uh, the grundle troll. She, uh, <laughs> she, uh, she, when I first met her, she was staring at me like this. Mm. And, uh, I was like, hey, how's it going? And we were just, uh, we were just working on this, this house up in Spring Hill. Mm. And she goes, this is amazing. And I said, have we met? And she was like, many times in mm. many different lives. Uh, you've got a very old soul. And, you know, you hear that and you're just like, oh, I'm cut from a different, I'm a cut from an older cloth. Yeah. But she had meant it like uh, I'd lived many lifetimes and whatever. Mm. So I was like, that's pretty cool. Do you think any of that is, does it like resonate with you? Because obviously no one knows. The answer to this question is we can't know. But what sounds good to you? What's the thing that you hope is true? I don't think about it. No, you don't. I really don't, man. What is the point of thinking about it? Like, here's the thing is like, I can sit there and I can, I can dream all day and we can come to a consensus that we both agree on. It doesn't change my day. True. You know what I mean? I still got to pay my bills and, and do all that. So, I mean, it feels, don't get me wrong. I don't want to sound like doom and gloom. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like it would be cool to, I guess it would be cool to do it all over, like if we lived multiple lives. I don't know. I don't would know. Would you want to live as a human again, or like an alien on some other planet? Like what definitely is... as a human. Okay. Just because of like the like the uh, the emotional intelligence that we have, uh, but an alien would be fucking dope. You know, apparently aliens like humans because of our creativity and our emotional uh, whatever that is that we have emotions. What did they interview one, and that's what he said. No, Amelia, you got to watch those documentaries. <laughs> There's a lot of them out there. there. That's all Area 51 is. It's a podcast set up like this <laughs> for aliens. They're He's like, like you know just... what I like about humans? Yeah. <laughs> I would watch that podcast. Are you so kidding me? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I think the idea of talking about what happens when we die is, for me personally, um, I've done a few podcasts with people about the topic of death just because I feel like we don't talk about it enough, and it's something that all of us are going to experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and because it's something that's this giant unknown, you really can find out about somebody by asking what they, it's not really like, what do you think happens when we die? But it's like, what, what gives your soul peace? Like to say there's nothing and it's just like darkness is like terrifying to me, but I have to hold that as a possibility. Does it you know? make it, does it, do you feel like it saps like your energy? Like it makes you depressed? If you were to, if that, if you were to find that, that that was true, like it's just over, lights are off, show's over. Well, here's the thing: there's nothing I can do about it. Right. Like, let's say I have awareness for a minute, right? It's like flickering out. I'm watching, and I'm like, oh no, I've died. And then it's like slowly, slowly, nothing. Well, here's the thing: I go to sleep, and that happens to me, right? I don't know when I fall asleep usually, but it just you lose consciousness and it goes away and then we always just go well it's not scary because we're going to wake up in the morning well someday you're just not going to wake up so it's a peaceful thing to sleep so it's mm. not a terrifying thing like i don't want to fall asleep because i might not wake up but the idea of death and it being something that is like final like your body now goes in whatever form you want it to but it basically is destroyed so you don't come back as you or you don't you're not you anymore but Taking psychedelics, talking to people who have had near death, death experiences, people who have been by the bedside of people that have passed away. There's a feeling that you get. And I think that is really interesting to explore where it's like, is there something that's happening? Most people might say yes, if they've been in those situations, taking 
a certain psychedelic that like opens you up to some new have you done that? realm. I haven't had and I I have, but I haven't had the experience that some people talk about where it's like you do shrooms or you did DMT. Um, I've done mushrooms before, but again, not to the point where it's like I've lost myself and I would like to, I would like to have the experience because the reason people take mushrooms in a get over your fear of death way is because you, you almost are living as if you died. Mm -hmm. You can see yourself as just a small sliver of what you are, you know, like me as a human. That's a wild ride. Like I, I've done that with, with shrooms multiple times. Really? Yeah. D- I mean, I plan to. DM. I've done DMT as well, though. Okay, like a blast off, like you're out of your body. I didn't blast off. I okay. wish. See, I, I, I like. Was afraid of it. V- exactly. I like very. I could feel myself doing this, where it was like, uh, almost. I could feel something like wanting to come out of my forehead. Like that's the only way I can mm-hmm. describe it. Where it was like on mushrooms. No, on for DMT, but oh, very DMT. very small, like yeah, yeah. like basically a whiff of it. So okay, it wasn't super you, crazy, but I remember being very interested in looking at my body, like my yeah. skin, and I almost felt like I could see through it where I was like, it's so many beautiful colors in there, like veins and all of that. I could just see more. So I learned to appreciate um, the healthy fear that comes along with that. And I know I wasn't ready, which is why I didn't want to go super crazy. But with mushrooms, I feel like there is something intelligent about them. And it's way less, I'm not as afraid because I feel like they are there for a reason and that they give us experiences to help us or to give us knowledge or whatever. That's interesting to me because if I have a bad trip on DMT, it's short lived, right? Right. Which some people like, uh, they like, they'll talk about doing it and they felt like they lived for three months. Wow. uh, Like when they blasted off. Or whatever, but um, I've had bad trips on mushrooms, and it's a long night. What does bad trip mean? Like you were afraid? It's nightmarish, yeah. Okay. You feel terror. Ooh. You know, you feel genuine terror, and it sucks. Like you're afraid. You know, you're in fear for your life or what whatever's happening. You know, at the time. Like you feel out of control, mm-hmm. and so then you're afraid that it won't end or that. Uh, that just that it's happening. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Even know that you think about it ending. You know, uh, I, li- I was living in Chicago, and I was dating this girl Addie, and she was like super eccentric. You know, all uh, long before I had a bunch of tattoos, she was super tatted up, and then like her um, her house w- was exactly like her character. Like she had black walls with bat skeletons hanging off of them, and these this big grandfather clock, and like. She uh, had like all these like leopard print things. She would hang on the ceiling, and like it was just cool, man. It was like this yeah. like this like super. Sounds like a vampire house. It was very vampire house. Okay. Uh, so I remember we were partying all day. Me and Anthony, the the dude's mustache I kissed. Um, <laughs> he comes back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were uh, we were partying all day, and then we we're on a pool on the top of a hotel. We were on a pool, so we were like sunbaked. Okay. And we've been drinking all day. It's a terrible time to do shrooms. Yeah. Right? And our house was so out of control with parties that we would show up and parties would be happening. When you know, and I think just there our other roommate was there at the time, but literally the point like where you get home, you're like, oh, I'm gonna relax and there's thirty people in your house, you're yeah. like, No, I'm not. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna party longer. So, um, I walk in and this kid is like, hey man, appreciate you having us, hands us a bag of shrooms. And I looked at Anthony, I was like, fuck it. You know, and the the alcohol that had been thinking for me all day made terrible decisions (laughs) that night, you know, because I take half the bag, he takes half the bag. And, um, you know, like a quarter of shrooms is like a good amount, you know, and... I mean, do you know grams at all? Like, do you have any idea how much? Yeah, so a quarter would be seven grams. Emilio and so but so but we split it so it was okay uh three and a half yeah we, math yeah which is would, my which, favorite which would be an eighth <laughs> so um, no, which is so three and a half is decent but they say five is where it's like you go crazy I mean if you're not used to doing it three and a half is a good place to oh, start you know that's yeah they you say know? usually start like with two and a half or whatever <clears throat> so we did it, and mind you, I have no food in my stomach. Yeah. Only alcohol. Yeah. And uh, and I was smoking a lot of weed at the time. I'm just not in my right mind. So I take the train to Addie's. I, I didn't, I was like, man, I'm just tired. I don't want to be here. So I took the train to Addie's house, and I'm sitting there, and I just feel weird. I forgot that I had done Oh. It. 
Just get Ooh, my mind. Like, Just get my sneak, mind. A sneak up trip. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, anyways, I'm sitting there. I'm like, man, I feel weird. I'm gonna chug a beer, try to level out. Stop. That's what that was my solution for everything back then. <laughs> it's not I good. Swear, yeah, it was awful. It's like, oh, I'm anxious. Let me drink a beer. Yeah. I'm tired. Let me drink a beer. You know, like I need to relax. Let me drink a beer. So I had a problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so long story short, I. You go to the vampire house. I'm sitting at the vampire house, and I'm sitting there. I feel weird. I chug a beer. It makes it a thousand times worse. It kicks yeah. in immediately now. Yeah. And it was so, like, she was scaring me. Yeah. And she's, like, trying to calm me down, like, hey, it's okay. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude. Like, get away from me. And yeah. it, went, it just went zero to 100 so fast. I'd never had it kick in. So normally I can kind of, like... As it's ramping up, I can kind of go with it. You know right. what I mean? And I had done shrimp so many times. Yeah. So, you know, I lost respect for it. Yeah. That was stupid. Because um, now I have a great respect for it. And oh, it's, like it's a sacred. Very, yeah. It's and like, sacred. It's early morning. I've eaten a great breakfast. I've gotten good sleep. Like, yeah. it, you know, it's been years since I've done it. But that's how the last time I did it was. And it was, it was fantastic. Yeah. But what did Mike Tyson say? He goes, uh, I like... I like to do it at the worst times and then go into the basement so I can look into the corners. <laughs> You're like, oh, my God. No, no thank you. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Like, yeah, he, he, he uh, a lot of people, a lot of people say even with DMT, you have an option. You can go the fun route or you can go the know yourself route. And the mm. know yourself route tend, tends to deal with, like, a lot of shit you don't like about right. yourself. So but it scary. is a, a growing experience. I mean... Obviously, mixing substances, I, I look at alcohol when in the midst of shrooms as like poison versus medicine. And it's like, if you mix those two things, obviously, it's probably not going to be a good time. But I absolutely respect them so much because I look at them as like a living being. Imagine if you got to meet someone that was really, really awesome. And then when you ate them, they like took you on some kind of self. You're talking about fungus, right? I mean, it's a mushroom. The, right, yeah, the yeah. Mushrooms, though. But I feel like they are. Um, I don't know. I just feel like there's the, all throughout their history and through the history of humans and mushrooms existing together. There is something so cool and mysterious about it that if you don't have respect for it and if you don't do it in a way that is very kind of a sacred, that's why there's a lot of ritual surrounding it. Um, you can misuse it, and then I don't think that it does the same thing that it's meant to. It's almost like it knows if you're respectful of it and, and what, how you are going into it. And if you're not, it's it's almost like a lesson. If it's like, oh, you're abusing me? Okay, well, now you're going to be yeah. afraid of it. Like, maybe no, it's not point. for you. Um, but I do, uh, I do very much want to have one of those experiences because for me, I feel like it... And I've, I've, like I said, I've had smaller ones where I, I love so much the feeling of just kind of being recentered with nature and just being a, a physical human being. That's kind of what I feel like mushrooms mm. do is they remind you of being human and what's so special about it. And being out in nature, I think, is very, very important as well. Um, but, you know, it all comes back to this idea of death. And I feel like mushrooms are this natural way to experience that and then to see that there is a way to be out of control or to even believe that you've died, but it is not what you thought it would be. And that hmm. when you come back into your body, you can reflect on it for like years. Some people take right. a single mushroom trip and then they are still learning from it way, way after. Right. And for me, I think, you know, Johns Hopkins has been doing research on this for so long where people who are facing death or even just people, they just kind of want to study them. But it's a majority of people who have a real serious reason to want to face death. They come out of it with this. It's like they reconciled with the purpose of life. And through no longer being afraid of death, they can accept their sickness. They can, you know, they take things away from it that I don't think there's other methods of getting there. You know, you can go to therapy. You can even have a near-death experience. And I think it does the same. But to have this little natural thing that can show up kind of like when you ask it to, like mm -hmm. that's been my experience in my life. They literally will show up when I need them to like in nature, which mm. is so wild. Um, but yeah, I respect them so much. Like anytime I see one, I treat it with almost like seeing, seeing an alien. Like literally if I got to see an alien, I'd be like, oh, you're from another world. And I just, I have to have only reverence for you. Like you are something else. 
And I see these little things and I'm just like, where did you come from? And why are you here? And why do you connect to my brain, my human brain in such a way that you give me this experience that is priceless, that I can come back from it and appreciate myself, appreciate nature and the people around me, and then also lose my fear of the thing that all of us are afraid of in some way, you know? It's kind of weird. Like, why do they exist? It sounds like you're ready. I Yes. I, for my 30th birthday, which was in February, I, I had kind of planned to, and it was it was a very, very mild one. I thought I wanted to take it slow, um, and I just felt very, very happy. That's when you did the two grams? Uh, this was, I think, three, I want to say, but I didn't know how powerful they would be. Um, I just realized you have mushrooms on your shirt. Yes, I do. Um, so yeah, I'm very <laughs> excited and I prepare for this stuff for a long time. I am not somebody who's just like, let's just see what happens. Like, cause I actually have, um, kind of a problem with if I get paranoid and I don't get paranoid except for two, two times. If there's a frog that is like about to jump on me or if I'm in a swimming pool, this ha Ryan, I didn't tell you this. Went a different direction. This happened the other day when I was swimming. So I had this fear as a kid of a shark being in the swimming pool. Like every time I swam and I, it, this overwhelming panic and paranoia comes over. Like as soon as I like go off of the wall of the pool, it's like there's a shark behind me and it's about to get me or underneath me and it's about to get me. And even seeing my own shadow in the pool will freak me out. And the other day I went swimming. You're talking about now at 30 years old, you think I this? thought I was over it. <laughs> I thought I was over it and I was swimming in the pool and I saw my shadow and I was like, there's a whale. So now it's whales. Now it's not even sharks, like a killer whale. But I have these moments where like I can no longer control the fear that is t that has overtaken me. And maybe someday we'll talk about the frog experience because Alex was there and he knows what happened. But like just the <laughs> feeling of absolute panic actually scares me. It's not the frog and it's not the pool, obviously. It is it's the, just the, feeling, anxiety. the feeling of panic. Yeah. And the very, very first time that I ever took mushrooms, I was sitting out and I was preparing for it. And suddenly this thought came that was like, what if you start hallucinating like a demon? Because, you know, you hear people like I was getting chased by demons in the street. And uh, so I just they had... did meth. <laughs> yeah, it was not mushrooms. These mushrooms were in the shape of rocks and crystals. Yeah. And the thing is, I think when somebody has a bad trip, that's why I was interested in kind of what yours was. And it makes sense that there was alcohol mixed in because I truly think if your body is not right, because if you eat mushrooms like the fibers, they'll make you sick. So it's like it's kind of one of those things where you have to go through a difficult time in order to get the benefit out of it. It's not just all good to Amy go. Amy said when she threw up, <clears throat> she, uh, I think they did tea out in this field, but she said when she threw up, that was the hardest she had ever tripped. Wow. So she, they ingested it and then threw it up. And then yeah. she's, she's like, I went to the moon. Yeah. Like her body didn't even exist anymore or something like that. Yeah. And that's, it sounds weird, but I would I would like that experience just because I think it is a very transformative type of experience. But I was sitting out in this field with these beautiful trees all around, and I had this panic moment where my heart started racing, and I was looking at the tree branches, and I started to like see almost like wild animals. And one of my fears that I had, that's not like a real fear, but it's just kind of like, oh, imagine if this happened. Imagine being in the wild and suddenly realizing that there's a tiger staring at you. Like you're in, it's camouflaged, and then suddenly your eyes focus and you're like, there's a wild cat you're that's about to pounce. You're not in the Amazon. I know, but like think about a wild animal. Okay, we're in Florida, some kind of panther or something or an alligator, that it's camouflaged and then suddenly definitely you ants. register. There's definitely, you can be- Ants? Ants. <laughs> Definitely ants out there. <laughs> like a massive ant just staring. But I had this idea of what if there was a wild animal that was about to chase me and I just imagined it like bounding towards me and I'm like sitting in the ground and I yeah. can't get up. So I had this panic moment and so I started saying like, I am light, I am love, and I am safe. And I don't know where it came from, but I just kept saying it over and over again. And it was myself working myself into a calmer place. Mm. And then from there, it was a very just I think that's enjoyable. the name of like a Tony Robbins book. Probably. <laughs> it sounds like it. But it, so those moments of panic, I am afraid of, but I'm also like, I know there's a way to get myself out of it. And I think Terrence McKenna said, play bongo drums. Like if you're having a bad trip, just sit there and it brings you back for some reason because you're like hitting something and hearing hmm. sound and it's rhythmic. That's interesting. I think that was Matthew McConaughey, actually. <laughs> that's weed and that's bongos while you're naked before you get arrested. There I don't you know go. if you've read his his book but uh -huh. gr green light it's a great it's a great little book um so oh 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 oh, oh, oh. we kind of touched on it a little bit we're running we're at an hour and 15 minutes are you serious yeah. dang it okay wait wait wait, so, wait 
There's so many good questions. Okay, this is a fun one. If you suddenly woke up as an animal, what would you want to be? A bear. A bear? Why? They're, they're, who fucks with a bear? No one. And then they just do what they, what they want. They hibernate. They eat whatever they want. Did you know that what... So I, it took me into my 30s to realize that hibernating was not them just sleeping for a long time. Okay, what is it? Because that's what I think it is. <laughs> I'm glad I can share this with somebody. Hibernating just means they eat a bunch because they're not going to eat that much during the cold so they can just go a long time without eating, but they don't sleep. They get out. They do. They Oh. They're more lethargic. Okay. But they're not just, expending energy, but they're not just legit, straight up asleep. I thought this dude took a eight month nap or something. I was like, I thought they is, go into a cave yeah. and like roll a door closed and they're just like, no one bother me. And they just like make a little bed of feathers and just yep, fall asleep. Not what it is. Mm. It's crazy, dude. Hmm. Then that makes me want to be a bear because I'm like, most of the bear's life is like, <laughs> well, then wasted. yeah, I'll be a bear. <laughs> It's wasted on sleep. I thought I was going to sleep a lot. Yeah. What did you say our time was at? An hour and 15 minutes. We're going to blow through these, okay? All right. Okay. Do aliens exist? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what are you afraid of? Aliens. Really? <laughs> For real? No. Okay, what are you afraid of? I mean, dude, would you be stoked if an alien came down? Hell or would you be yes. like, what is about to happen? Yes, yeah, both. Both. <laughs> Like, Arrival is my favorite movie, and I hope that that's how aliens come. That it's like everyone in the whole world knows for a fact something is here. It's not just like, did you guys see that alien over in Missouri? And it's like, I don't know, the video looks fake. It's like, did you no, see no. what they just released yesterday, or the two days ago? No, but I'm very excited to hear. 52-year-old or 32-year-old or some <laughs> old photo <laughs> okay. of, of a jet pilot took a photo of a diamond, like a prism UFO, and it's like... A, it's a crazy photo. It's cool. Okay. You should look it up. So it's okay. We got, we got young Jamie on the back over here. Cool. He's gonna find it. What is it? Just type in um. Fifty-two year old or thirty-two year old <laughs> picture yeah. of diamond UFO. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> diamond UFO. Diamond UFO. Which one is it? Uh oh. Secret UFO dossier. Yeah, that one. Up, it was for, it's for, no, up, over, right yeah, there, from 1990, yeah. Oh, stop. That's the thing? Isn't that wild? No, that's not real. That's a blimp. They just, so they won't release um, the guy who took the photo because they're... They won't release privacy, the name? Privacy for his okay. family or something. I guess he's still around. Because it was only in 1990. I was born in 1990. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? That is pretty pretty crazy looking. But there was two, there was two planes circling around it. And uh, when the, the second they took the photo, I guess it it shot back up into the sky. Oh, that's crazy! I like that. Pretty wild how it looks. I though, like huh? that. Yeah. Looks like something out of Star Wars. It does. Ale Alex, don't buy it. Not for a second. Oh, Alex, are you a denier? Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Why? Why? Tell me everything. It just looks like. I... You don't believe in UFOs at all? Yeah. I was, no, uh, I do. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I do. I just think a lot of them are hoaxes. Yes, I yeah, agree I with agree. that. I think there's a lot that. to gain out of out of for, 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 look thirty-two at us. years later. Well, what the hell is that then? <laughs> <laughs> that is human made. Um, have has everyone here seen the phenomenon, the documentary? I know Ryan has. Have mm -hmm. you seen it? If you like aliens, this one is, I love it the most. I love the phenomenon the most because how, how, I love. I love the documentaries on aliens. The, yeah. the problem is that they're all boring as shit. No, not the phenomenon. No. I'm telling you. Ryan's great at smelling. <laughs> luckily, this, luckily that screen's blown now. You can't see what's happening here. <laughs> all right, here's the trailer. There are cases that are not explainable in conventional terms. You guys watch this? Oh yeah. Very epic looking trailer, but the kids, the South African kids that they <laughs> <laughs> What was that? Chris Pratt know. with we his belly. Leave, we just leave that up the entire time. <laughs> um, the most credible, beautiful, amazing, gave me chills story of that whole thing were those kids and how they, because you have kids and you can tell when a kid is making something up and when it's like, oh, they've seen something, like something happened. Right. It was amazing. I love I love the yeah, phenomenon. A, a group of children yeah. that all saw the same thing like in the eighties and they had the news crew there the next day and took interviews with all the kids and now they've gone and talked to all the kids as adults. 
So it's worth it. It's oh, worth watching seeing, that whole thing. Yeah. Like, and it was in daylight. Yeah. Uh, Alex ain't buying it, dude. Look at it. <laughs> how, how do you? Uh, what is that? Yeah. How do you? How do you explain? And they that? say like they chose the school because they wouldn't get shot down because it's kids there and it's not like a government building where. But they still, you know, mess with some I'm gonna government watch buildings. Yeah, you should. That's you what should. I'm gonna do today. Um, Alex. When you watch the phenomenon, <laughs> you can come back and you can tell us all about right, all your. I'll watch it. I promise I'll watch it. Okay, I love it. But it's just watching that trailer. There's so much noise. Like uh, it's all the same footage that you see over and over again. There's just so much. We have no idea of knowing what's real or what's fake because there's so much. I, I don't know how else to explain it other than mm-hmm. like noise. Like back just... when LimeWire existed, the, the, it, you're absolutely right. Those were the same videos I was downloading off LimeWire right. and Kazaa and. And yeah, stuff, and, and it's just like it. everybody's regurgitating the same stories and the same experiences, and I get it. That's like a you know evidence for oh, it's real because everybody tells the same story. But it's also like there's a lot of obviously fake stuff, so it's yes. it's impossible to know what's real and what's fake. I agree with you, and I've seen almost every UFO. I mean, within the first ten minutes, if it's like this person's actually lying, and I'm not going to waste my time on it, then we don't watch all of those. But I've sought out. UFO documentaries like crazy because I want to find the ones that I'm like okay this person seems credible and the phenomenon seems to be the one because it's the one dude I forgot his name but he's a French guy who has been at every um, UFO sighting or whatever like he has to go and document all of it so if this one dude has gone and talked to all these different people and then he's the one who is kind of like here's my evidence and then there's other people that kind of throw it on there as well I think when it comes to government stuff I'm kind of like I don't know what I can believe with that just because it's, you know, you don't know the whole backstory of all of that. When when it comes to kids and kids who don't have anything to gain from talking about this kind of terrifying experience, um, that's what I believe is the kids also make shit up. You think that, Alex, but a I'm telling you, you watch it. A group of kids. You watch it. <laughs> we we <laughs> listen, you. we all we all grew up together, right? And we we like had weird experiences that we're all like, that was weird, right? But the looks and on their faces. And we tell the same story, and then you no. watch it. The, the looks. Okay, I'll watch it. Also, shout out to downloading videos on LimeWire. <laughs> Aged myself, R. really. R. Yeah. All the millennials are like, "What?" <laughs> I called my dad the other day, and uh, I was like, "Dad, dad, dad!" And he's like, "What?" And I'm like yelling over the phone, and I'm like, "Did you see that the, the aliens are they're they're invading us right now?" And he's like, "What?" I'm like, "Look, turn on the news. The aliens are here." And he's like, "No, I didn't." I'm I'm turning on the TV right now. I don't. What are you talking about, man? And he knew something was awry. He knew yeah. something was up. <laughs> and I was like, No, seriously, man. They're they're picking up everybody with big dicks. <laughs> and I'm calling you to let you know that you have nothing to worry about, and that this ship is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Amelia. Nice. <laughs> they sound human, Ryan like really showed, human. Ryan showed me the compilation of all, just all the different types of screaming goats. Have you ever heard a fox scream? Mm-mm. It actually sounds like a person being murdered in the woods. There's been a lot of noise. I'm just going to scream. <laughs> you hear that shit? That's fucking <laughs> it <sounds like> you. <laughs> if I if you guys had never shown me that and I was just camping and heard that, yeah. I'd oh. be like, we need to Ow. get yes. the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> we need to leave, dude. Oh, oh. I don't like looking at that. No. Ew, I don't oh. like his eyes. They're so scary. Don't do it again. Oh. <laughs> Don't do it again. <laughs> that was so scary. Here's my next question. Have you ever been terrified for your life? Just right now. now. <laughs> yeah, right now. If the... we find this video, it's going to be my favorite thing. Oh, oh, it is. God. Look at the mustache. Men and women, boys and girls, check your calendars. Keep checking until you find Saturday, March 23rd. See that empty box? Fill it with these words. Marketplace 29 AD. This was one take. Excellent. Here's what you need to know. Show between the hours of 10 and 3. And rest easy, my friend. Admission is free. Admission is free. (laughs) You'll find brick making, bread baking, candle shaking, and live interactive dramas. Stop. Trust me, you won't want to miss out on this adventure of a lifetime. Do you remember saying available? 
Yeah, I couldn't figure, <laughs> the blooper reel for the, blooper. the And there's gonna be animals. <laughs> 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 the bloopers for that. Can you find the bloopers? Because oh, that's goodness. the way we're gonna end this video, this podcast. Food is also available. <laughs> food is also available to be purchased. <laughs> food is also available to be purchased. Too much wind. <laughs> what? Food is also available to be purchased. Why can't I say available? Okay. Available. 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 <laughs> I'm learning how to talk today. Be careful. There's word that <laughs> I can't remember my life. This actually right gave me anxiety, oh, this whole oh. thing. Uh, wow. We were pouring gasoline over my knees <laughs> and then lighting it on fire. <laughs> yeah, just get it nice and No, set. get this. Just do some water outside. Here, toss some water on it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you actually tripped hard on that. The first one was better, but we didn't use it. What a great setting at night. That place looks so spooky. I know. Hey, <laughs> this was the coolest thing ever. I love how you ever, sacrificed though. the cable so that you can yeah. make a <laughs> shell <laughs> necklace. How cool is that, though? You Wait, just grew up here. Did the necklace just appear? Oh, it did. Because he's like wearing it. Oh, he's Cause time later. Is passed. Oh, yeah. Time has passed. No. And tell them that it's lonesome nights are over somewhere. Creepy. I'm so alone. Do you remember the ending? Me and Ryan. Oh, dude, what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> wow, 2013, Emilio. Jeez. A long time ago. Okay, I think um, this has been such an enjoyable time. Thank you all for being here. I I loved getting to ask you those questions what do you think should i keep the list take some off add some in um i guess it would depend on the person you're talking to it does depend yeah i wouldn't i, I wouldn't i wouldn't read them off how you read them off though oh no no i wouldn't just be like i should have them in my brain already you think yeah i would have like a like well a i think it'd be good to have them ahead of time yes like especially the ones of like what's a you know what? What's your biggest fear? Like the ones that you have to sit there and think about. Mm. I think it'd be good. To oh, have you think the person at least should certain, know? At least certain some of those questions. Yeah, mm. it'd be good to have something already. <laughs> just Interesting. You looked into the camera. <laughs> it's okay. It's just, it's oh. just moving around the room. Oh. I'm bringing it over to show Alex. Oh, cute.